Alrighty guys, welcome back to another video. So uh, it's time to do the follow-up. Um, I'm excited, but also this is a long video and a big take, so hopefully we get it all right and hopefully you guys like it. So uh, last time we did the ultimate guide on the bird or Helvis gear, um, and today we're going to do it on Ethnia, Ethnia, the, the deer, the deer. Um, so with all the hype around the new potential demonic beasts coming out, I thought this was good timing just to make sure you guys know how to farm the deer nice and quickly. So again, this is the ultimate guide. So we'll be going through passives, gimmicks. We're we'll going through team setups, uh, artifact card usage, the the whole lot, right? So. Um, Again, like last time, this is my kind of credentials. If you if you if you care about this, uh, this is basically I've got ten out of seventeen of the holy relics. I've only got seven to go. It's not because you know I can't do it. I can farm this quite comfortably now with a few different teams. Um, I just haven't got around to completing the rest of the relics yet. So that being said, uh, let's let's jump in. So uh, the deer. First things first, you need to build a team. So we'll start with the. The, the hero that you pretty much, I mean, you, you need, right? Like, it's it's Yorm, uh, or Yormengend. Um, this is the this is the deer hero, right? She's specifically designed for the deer. That's what her passive does, and her holy relic obviously enhances that as well. Um, so pretty much this is the hero that you want. Her passive means that basically every time you use three attacks, or three allies use each skill once or more, you get a 30% stat buff on top of the 30% stat buff that she does at the start of every turn. So, huge amount of stat buffs is lovely, and then, again, her whip, uh, or <laughs> Vendira whip, her holy relic, basically, if you do the three different skills from three different allies, removes all your debuffs, um, and increases the skill ranks of all the cards. So this is broken, this is super, super strong, it makes it really, really easy. Um, the, this deer is probably a little bit different to bird in the sense that bird, you know, I couldn't, like, a lot of people, slash myself included, couldn't even clear the bird without Magelda's Holy Relic. I, I I could do it. I could do it without her Holy Relic on this one. So it is doable. Um, it is a lot harder to do, obviously, and a lot more RNG dependent. So, look, as always, farm what you can up to whatever floor you can, and then get her Holy Relic, and it'll make your life a heck of a lot easier. Um, if you can't farm the deer yet at least to floor one, uh, you need to spend some more time investing in those heroes that you're using, right? It's unfortunately as simple as that. Um, total CC wise, you should be looking at somewhere around the, like I said last time, at kind of mid 200s at least. Um, anywhere kind of, I don't want to say 230, 240-ish or so above, you should be okay. Um, in terms of max like levels for heroes, this one's probably a little bit different again, like I'd probably recommend level at least level 100 fully essayed on Yorm for sure. And then your other heroes could maybe be level 90s, but I, I would usually recommend just to be safe level 100 fully essayed on everyone. Uh, and we'll get into equipment once we've, once we've filled out the rest of the team. So, let's do the rest of the team. So, this... the DIA is a little bit different in terms of you need to have a red, blue, and green hero like there's there's no getting around it um you need to have it for what's called the color wheel cycle that which will run through when we actually get into the fight but you need to have a red hero you need uh, a strength hero an hp hero and a speed hero red green and blue right because you need to complete the cycle as i was saying so um let's have a look at our red hero right uh, like i said oh not like i said but like you can see i pretty much i probably use yorm as the green hero right because she has two attack cards and i'll explain why that's important in a second um but she has two attack guards, she's the green hero, so this is pretty much who I run for the HP. Uh, you can potentially have like your wild card slot filled in with that, um, but not really needed. So, red heroes, strength heroes. Freya, if you guys seen him in my other deer videos, uh, he's just a PvE god, uh, I think, at least. He has a great cleave card. His ult is death damage, which is super helpful. Obviously, the higher duped it is. Uh, he gives stat boosts to himself as well as everyone around him. He makes you immune to ignite. He's just a really good overall PvE unit. Uh, so he's definitely my favorite pick for the red unit. So um, when you're picking these other heroes, you want to make sure that nine times out of ten, you want to make sure they have a double attack card. So you have two attack cards rather than like say Deanne who has an attack card and then a stance card right the reason for this is because you'll need to attack the deer as I was saying in form of a color wheel cycle so you need to go red blue oh sorry red green blue round and round right so 
RNG sucks enough on this boss. You want to make sure that you capitalize on your RNG as much as you can. So, like, you want to, you know, if you need a red card and you have a DN and then suddenly you get a stance card instead of an attack card, right? Like, that would have been an attack card if you're using Freya. So you just need to be careful with that. Um, again, look, if you want to bring something like a DN or like a Matrona because you're dying a bit too easily and you need a taunt hero or a tanking hero, you can definitely do that. Um, but you'd probably just maybe want to fill in your wild card slot over here with another red unit, right? So you're not stuffing yourself when it comes to the red, the strength attacks. So, uh, again, Freya is my number one pick for this. Secondly, you could definitely use Sario, right? He's got a strong ultimate. Mine's five out of six, almost six out of six, but most people will have him pretty highly duped. Um, he has, his Holy Relic really helps his overall stats as well. Uh, he has a great grace, right? He's often used as, as links. Um, the only thing that kind of lets him down a little bit is his passive is not really built for a deer team. It's more built, obviously, for a goddess team, right? So and you can't really build a goddess team, um, not really, uh, for deer, unfortunately, which is a shame. So um, not bad at all. Um, you could also use Scardi. Um, Scardi is really good, obviously, the more debuff she has on her. So I probably wouldn't run her with the king team that you guys are probably going to see um, me run, just because it's my favorite team and it's the, the most consistent for me, at least. Just because um, King Shield obviously stops you from getting debuffed and Scardi kind of wants debuffs. So you could definitely run Scardi as well. Um, those are probably my top. I mean, you could even, I mean, if you really want to, you could maybe run Princess Brunhild, the red one. But, you know, her passive again is more reliant on other Ragnarok heroes on the field. So that doesn't really help. Actually is... See, I'm learning stuff as we go. Is she Ragnarok? Yeah, she's Ragnarok. So, I mean, it couldn't. It could be a worse pick, right? You could build a Ragnarok team up. Um, but I'd probably be careful there just because the only reason... Like, she has two attack cards, which is great, but just be careful. Rem can be a really good choice here, right? Uh, if you build, like, an unknown team or just use her with uh, Yorm, Rem is, can be really, really strong. Basically, just your double attack card red unit that you've got built will, will benefit you. Um, but again, my favorite choice is Freya, right? Um, oh, just quickly, I do obviously have Red Tamiel Link on Yorm just because she's a linchpin of this whole team. So I want to make sure she survives. So Red Tamiel Link goes on her. Um, on Freya, I'm just going to put a high duped hero uh, just for max stats, right? Um, and now we're on to blue units. So, or a speed unit. So there's a few different options you can run here. Uh, like I was saying, my favorite choice is King, just because he provides the shield for the team. And with the rank up that Yorm's Holy Relic gets, the shield becomes strong and you barely take any damage at all. So super consistent there. Um, but if you don't want to use King, or maybe this you don't find this as effective without her Holy Relic, you could run like the one. Um, it's still a good unit. He's still got death damage as well, right? If you've got him a bit more duped, it's always helpful. Um, you could run Kusak, right? You could run Milim. Um, again, pretty much any double attack blue unit will serve you well here. Um, those are probably be my top picks. Um, because obviously you've got Kusak's got a good ultimate, um, and Milam's just can be very strong as well. But we're going to pick King. Now for me, I'm going to put Sario Link on... Oh, if I can find it. Sario Link on King, just because the, the more damage he does with his shield, the stronger our shield is, right? So that's really key for me. So here's our three units, right? Our green, our red, and our blue units. These are the ones that we want the most. Uh, now, finally, you have a wild card, pretty much slot, which is what I was calling it earlier. Now, again, this is where you can be if you're bringing like a tank, you can bring a follow-up, uh, same attribute to help get the color wheel and deal damage from that, from that attribute. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. Um, for me, I bring the ultimate, the one Escanor. Right, so obviously if you're bringing this one, you can't put the one here, but I bring the ultimate one, Escanor, and the reason I do that is for this. Uh, so I'll use the rank up of Yorm's Relic to give myself a, a gold burning spear for the final fight, because on floor three, phase four, uh, the deer basically, if you drop them below 20% health, they have a full heal and a stat boost, just like the bird does on their worst passive, but this is just a permanent deer passive. So the death damage will kick in um, before the full heal. 
So I always will save one of those for the final finishing of the deer, and I'll show you guys what I mean as we get there. Um, and for Escanor, I use uh, Merlin Link just because I want the extra crit chance. So if you're not running King and you're not too fussed about getting extra damage from him, you could obviously always put Sario Link on the ultimate, the one. Uh, basically, you just want to put Sario Link on your highest damage dealer, and then Tamiya Link pretty much always goes on Yorm just to, just to protect her. Uh, in terms of equipment, I've got attack crit on everyone apart from Yorm who have got attack defense. Uh, it's pretty much my standard run for the demonic beast units just because I want, still want them to do damage because uh, a lot of their stuff's based off attack, but obviously defense just for the overall healing and stuff as well there. Um, associated links, again, here we go. You've got uh, UR gear on a couple of them and then basically max stack gear on the rest for SSR. Um, and then artifact cards, I'm running the Demonic Beast one. Now, uh, if you guys saw my last one, you'll know the other ones I recommend, but basically the best card sets you can use is one of the Demonic Beast ones, right? Whether it's the single target one or whether it's the um, increased basic stats one. This one's my favorite just because there is a few AoEs here from Escanor and then from obviously King as well, so it's not quite as effective. Um, so these are obviously the... the first two picks you want to do are the Demonic Beast ones. If you don't have that one, you can also do uh, Guardians of Istal if you get debuffed is is quite nice. Again, careful with this one because if you're running King, you might not get debuffed as much. Um, another one that you could potentially do, again, recovers 1%. You could, you could run this one if you've invested into that one, the healing card set. Um, you could... Nah, you don't really want to run that one. Basically, anyone that's going to increase your overall stats, right? Or, um, you know, be beneficial for you in the fight. Either a healing one or overall stats. So, Demonic Beasts, if not the healing card set. If not, just do your max combat class settings for your cards that you can do. Alrighty, so that's the team. Let's, uh, let's jump into the first floor. Um, so, the... There's not too many kind of gimmicks or passives with the deer as you guys will see it kind of it follows a similar pattern all the way along um, which is good for us so what you'll see here is every second of every yeah so phase two and phase four will have a color wheel cycle so I'll show you guys what that means when I get there uh, but first I'm just going to start this off the way I always start out off all of these so I'm going to king shield for extra damage I'm going to use two other cards so that's going to give me a rank up because i've got yom's relic and then i'm just going to aoe and that'll that'll get us past this first this first phase pretty easily this is the first phase so um this is pretty straightforward um again if you guys are struggling on this then i'd recommend investing in your units a little bit more um just because yeah like this is obviously the first health bar of the first phase so you guys should be okay doing this um and look if you're not that's totally fine right like i'm there's no judgment from me here. It took me ages to get to this point. Um, it's just worth investing in units a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, so we're now at the point where we're at phase two, which is the blue health bar, and then phase four, which is the red health bar. They all follow the color wheel cycle. So what this means is you need to do your attacks in order of red, green, blue. If you don't, each floor will black punish you. So this floor will give you attack disable. The next floor will give you a freeze. Uh, which is an interesting mechanic, we'll get to it when we get to it. And then floor three will give you corrosion, right? So the one cheeky thing about bringing Escanor is you can actually buy or you can delay the onset of the cycle by using a light or dark character first. So Trader Mally, Perg Mally, Light Liz, any of those will, will kind of stop you from needing to do this. So we're going to go red, green, blue and again you guys will see that Escanor will attack and the color wheel cycle won't start but as soon as I attack with Freya the cycle will start All right so we'll attack okay damage and then you'll see green pop up and green above his head which means I need to attack with a green card and then now we'll move on to blue All right oh so close um Right, so now it's back to red. So I need to attack him with red. So again, this is where it can get really annoying if you get bad RNG. Um, if you're on the last, if you're on the last part and you know you're going to kill, you could use an Escanor card, like a light card, right? Um, 
which could be useful, but just be careful to make sure that you do kill, because otherwise now that you've started the color cycle, you will get the punishment for not doing it, right? So if you kill on this turn and you don't follow this, you'll be okay, but you get a lot less damage done by other cards. Um, anyway, let's just finish this off. I'm going to go... Yeah, we'll just skip here. Just for sake of argument. Cool, so that happens every second phase, right? So this phase we don't have to follow along. We can just do whatever we want with the cards. So I'm going to do... One, two... I'm just going to go along the, along the cycle here. Perfect. So like I was saying, guys, basically any unit that can fit a color cycle with a double attack card, as you can see, is going to be beneficial. Um, so, you know... If you guys do have any questions around it, you know, feel free to jump in our Discord or, you know, throw a comment below here and I can hopefully help. Um, but I think I covered most of the ones I recommend and just in the beginning there. Cool. So this is just as normal, right? Um, I believe um, this is why I love the King Shield because this is going to do, yeah, I mean, well, I'm not even getting damaged here, right? Like it doesn't even, it's not even hurting like I'm patiencing on Freya, which is, which is crazy. Um, so, uh, and what have we got? So, recovers 30% of damage. So yeah, so this one again is pretty straightforward. It recovers some damage, it does an AoE, it fills ultimate gauge, and then it has a single attack card. Um, so this floor is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to finish off with, so I've got too many blue cards and I've got no red cards, right? So, it's like, I probably just want to literally just yeet <laughs> the lack of a bit of term blue cards into the deer now because i want to have i want to get a red card for the next fight which if rng lets me perfect okay so we got lucky but again this is where <laughs> rng can potentially stuff you up right um so i'm gonna go one two Oh, I should probably just alt, right? One, two, three, four. So this is why having again double attack heroes is important, right? Because you don't wanna you don't wanna risk it. So yeah, I mean this we should be done here. Perfect, on to the next floor. Um, so again that floor if you if you stuff up the color cycle you'll get attack disabled. The next one we get frozen. Um, and funny enough, you actually, depending on how you go, you might actually want to get frozen on phase two. And I'll explain to you guys why. Um, when we get there. So onwards and upwards. I am excited though with all the rumors of the new demonic beasts. Uh, I'm excited but also not because it means more heroes to invest in. And I've only just started to build up my... Skull and Hardy team properly, which is very annoying. So uh, I will be releasing a Skull and Hardy guide once I've mastered it. Uh, honestly, I'm not going to even attempt to give you guys one now because I'm not that good at it and I can't complete it. So I'm not going to not gonna lie to you guys and say I'm all-knowing. All um, I'll definitely do the bird and the deer, as you guys know, because I can do it. Um, but otherwise, I'm not going not gonna to lie to you lovely people. Um, okay, same again. We're just going to basically run the same, same cycle. So... Um, King Shield, random two attacks, rank up the rest of the cards, and we're not gonna, we won't one shot here unfortunately, but, <laughs> oh no, I won't one shot a phase of a demonic beast, <laughs> sounds a bit ridiculous doesn't it, um, cool, so we've got the shield, um, hopefully guys you can see why I, lo why I love the shield by now, because like it just, like, King's even, King isn't even really here for a massive amount of damage. Like, sure, as we rank up his cards, he does more and more damage, which is awesome. But it's just the utility of the shield. Like, Frey hasn't even taken <laughs> taken a hit yet, right? Like, so, because he's got the stat boost. Um, so it's just kind of super helpful. You know, our defense is up to 22, 22k, so. Um, so now what we're going to do, I'm just going to heal up with the Yorm card. Uh, and then I'm going to... Ooh, um, you know what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use a couple of... Yeah, I do want to clear my hand out because I do want to clear it for next turn. Um, this is definitely overkill, but... This will give me a good amount of heals back. 
And this will probably kill here, actually, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, I would have loved to have get the third card off to get the rank up, but it's okay, it is what it is. Okay, phase two, blue phase, uh, blue health bar. We need to do the color wheel cycle. Now, this one works a little bit differently. So, as you guys can see in the top left and here, all it fixes all damage taken to one when attacked. And the reason for this is because you need to complete a full color cycle first. So, what I mean by that is I'm going to have to go like blue, green, red, and then I can do damage. So my strat here for this is because I have Yom's Relic and I'm using King, what I'll do is I'll go blue, red, green, blue. So what that means is I'll get a rank up on that third, third attack, which means I'll get a gold King Shield, which means I'll do max damage with a King Shield and get a, and again, get a King Shield for his next attack, right? So see how we're doing no damage? And now we're back to blue and he loses the fixed damage. Now I can actually damage him, right? So you basically want to run a full color cycle there. And that's why you want to make sure you have the right cards in your hand for that. Because otherwise it can get you in trouble, right? And again, RNG can be either your best friend or your worst nightmare. Um, but like I said, I generally find with the split between light cards and dark card and, and normal cards is, is not too bad. Um, so obviously there as well, we couldn't have used an Eskinor attack to, to start it off because it was still, we still need to run a full cycle. Um, as well, disclaimer: you need to run a full cycle within one turn for it to re to get the to get rid of the damage cap. So doing like a red, a green, or a red, a green, and then like moving cards and then doing a blue next turn won't work. You'll need to restart the color cycle again. So make sure you do the whole lot. Now, this is where you might want to get frozen. So this floor again, you can get frozen if you attack with the wrong card. Right? What that means is he's going to use this attack right so this is the same as like the birds attack with a taunt you basically if you can't one shot here you want to make sure that you've got a frozen hero right and that's also again why i like bringing Eskinor because he's always going to get frozen if the color wheel start cycle started so what i'm going to do is i'm going to alt i'm going to use my heal card then i'm going to king shield and then i'm going to Eskinor finger and this should kill and if it doesn't then my Eskinor gets frozen and I'm good right so uh, if you can't two turn it like I'm doing here then you want to make sure that one of your heroes gets frozen because otherwise your whole team will wipe and I've had that happen too many times and that's <laughs> it's very frustrating so just make sure you guys are aware of that there you go so we kill there but again if I didn't he would have frozen and then I would have been sweet so, back to normal. Um, the one thing to be careful with this one is I believe he does... Yeah, he does infect you here. So he does recovery disable you. So you want to kind of get through this one as quickly as possible, especially if you're not using a king shield, because that recovery disable uh, is very frustrating, as you guys I'm sure are aware, because you don't get your Tamiya Link recovery, you don't get your lifesteal, nothing like that. So um, I'm going to do one... Hmm. So this is where I've kind of got... I don't really have... Because I'm trying to, I want to run three cards, right? So I get a, a rank up. So I'm going to do one, two, three, and then I'm going to finish with King. Because this is going to be three separate. So I'm going to get the stat boost, and then I'm also going to get the rank up, right? So bit of bit of mental gymnastics here to uh, think your way through it. But we might even one one shot actually. That'll be. No, we won't to the rank up again like if you guys don't obviously have the realm relic this team might not work as well like with king and if you don't then just use a heart heavy headed damage dealer for king or instead of king right um i think he still might be viable if you've got a, a decently invested into king because he'll still do a decent chunk of damage um there you go so I, I don't get recovery disabled there right because i have the shield up so um yeah so my king is like I said, obviously level 100 attack crit and he's got full attack rolls and like full cosmetics invested in. So he's definitely got some love, but you know, I've only got the free to play weapon. So I don't have like f any more. I think I've only got one weapon for him. So, um, yeah, so it's nothing crazy. All right. Again, I'm a little bit concerned because I've got too many red cards and too many blue cards. So I'm just going to get rid of a whole bunch. Um, just to try and clear my hand a little bit. So if I'm running the color cycle, which I'm going to have to, oh, I should be fine. 
Yeah, this will kill. Um, I want to make sure I get a green card, right? Otherwise, I could be stuffed here. Um, so we'll see. As long as we get one green card. Uh, and I haven't mentioned any of the passives so far, guys, just because these are pretty much all the basic, all the passives he pretty much always gets. Um, they're nothing too crazy to kind of be worried about. Uh, this is the only one increase here is basic stats by 100% when enemy uses a rank up skill. So just don't bring a rank up skill, don't bring a Gotha, right? Otherwise you're in trouble. Um, increase here is demonstrated taken from enemy below 30. So all this stuff is all just standard stuff. So nothing to be concerned about just yet. Um, cool. So I got a green card, which is lucky. But I'm going to do what I did last time, and I'm just going to start off with Escanor cards, because as you guys can see, it's only phase two of this floor where he gets the damage cap at one, right? So I'm okay to just start yeeting stuff into, yeeting stuff into him, um, and I'm going to do... Do I ult? Yeah, I'm just going to ult, and then we'll do a level three card here. That was still pretty decent. This is going to do quite a lot of damage. We might even we might not even need to do another phase. Oh, maybe we'll see. How much damage is this going to do? Oofed. Okay, so again, you guys might take a little bit longer to do it just because I've got the rank up right from the cards and from the relic, but the pro the kind of premise stays the same. Awesome, and again, the good thing with King Shield, right, no one takes damage, and then when, if you do take damage, you just heal up with the Yorm card. So, um, we'll truck along quite nicely onto floor three. Um, hopefully this is making sense, guys. Um, like I said, there's not too many crazy gimmicks or anything that changes too much in this boss. Um, it's more just, um, you know, get through it. So, this is the floor that's going to get really difficult um, if you don't clear it through fast enough and I'll explain why um, I'm not sure if it's this phase that I can see it but I think it's just floor 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 four floor two yeah okay so he has a really annoying or she don't know if the deer's a he or she but a really annoying uh, stance that comes up a little bit later on uh, which I'll get to but again I'm just gonna start off the same way um, Three different cards and then an Escanor card just to do a bit more damage. You can start Escanor's passive with his attack, right? So, chucking on through. So, this is where I'm going to start to probably, probably about phase three, I'll probably start to like start ranking up Escanor's finger to save for a golden finger for the final phase. Um, and again, I'll explain to you guys why when we get there, but. For now, I'm just going to try and clear my hand a little bit. Um, so as you can see, broke through the shield right, does a bit more damage, and has that attack disable, which is annoying. For some reason with this team, he seems to really love King. I don't know why. Um, so I'm fortunate enough that I have, again, the Yorm Relic, uh, which is going to cleanse these debuffs. Or, or, yeah, cleanse this debuff for the attack. And then I'm going to um, King card just with a gold one if I do need it. So we're going to heal up. We're going to go in with the Burning Spear, the Finger of Doom, and then we're going to finish with that. So this times that this works quite well, because it ranks up, I get the three in, ranks up the cards, and then cleanses the debuff, which is nice. So again, passive basically increases attack late stats, nothing too crazy to be worried about. Um, but again, this is your color cycle, right? So phase two. So the fixed damage at one doesn't appear until the final phase of phase four. Um, so you're okay to just do what you need to do here. So I think because I've still got two health bar runs to go, I can get away with using an Escanor finger. So I'm going to do... Oh, I don't have a... I don't have a green card, fam. Okay, so... This is then what I'm going to do. Maximize clearing my hand and hope <laughs> that I get a green card or I just brute force my way through it. Hmm. Problem is I get corrosion if I stuff up the cycle, right? So my only hope really here is to get an Escanor finger or oh, just got a green card that last turn. So lucky, okay. Um, so I'm going to green card and then I'm just gonna do a silver blue card I think that'll be plenty 
So again, the you know the the, sh the damage now is actually getting through my shield to do a bit of damage, um, but slowly we're getting more and more attack, right? So this is going to become better and better for us. So I'm going to heal up King a little bit. Uh, we're going to then shield, and then we'll do that, and I think that should be enough. I'm just going to throw that card out there as well, just anyway. Yeah, we should be sweet here. So very lucky there with a the one green card at the end. Uh, otherwise, I probably would have just had to try and brute force it through with an ult. Remember, if you kill, uh, kill even with the wrong card, it will it will not give you the the negative effect. Which on this floor again is corrosion. You don't want the grey corrosion buff for two turns. So I'm going to I'm going to save my king ult for the next floor, and I will show you guys why. Um, so ideally, here what I'm doing is I'm just. Again, clearing up my hand, I want to rank up this finger. Um, and I want to try and make sure I give myself at least one of each color card uh, for the next turn on top of the ults that I have. Because I'm going to have that fixed damage at one again. So I'm happy to hang out in this phase for a little bit if I need to. Um, just to give me the cards I need. See, that is... Not really ideal. So what I'm probably going to do... Hmm, how do I want to do this? I'm probably going to... Oh, it's not too bad, I suppose. I'm probably going to... Alt. Finger. Finger. And that should be enough. Because I don't... I need to keep those cards, ideally, if I can. I think this kills, because I've got the attack increase. I'm not too fussed about Yom's ult for the next fight, just because all the stat boosts, I don't really need it. The other two are more important. So... Alright, so... The only passive that gets really annoying that you want to keep an eye out for, which I think is... You get it somewhere between these two, um, is if it let me scroll down, no? Somewhere between these two is it takes away your ultimate gauge at the start of the new turn. That can get really annoying. That's probably the only one that's the worst one. Oh, I'm going to have to use Brayer Alt. That's really annoying. Okay, so I got a little bit stuffed over an RNG here, right? So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to... I want to get to a point where I get can use King's Alt for a big shield, right? Because his attack here, his AoE attack, gets rid of an ultimate gauge. So I don't want to lose my ult if I can help it. Um, so, although Eskinor ult's not really like the, the one I ideally would want to have happen is get another Freya card here. Then I could have King, Freya card, Yorm card. Then I could have altered, would have pushed me onto a red cycle. Then I could have Freya altered and finished with a gold finger. Um, so, I don't know if you guys can tell, I've done this a few times, but we're going to have to just go blue. It's a massive waste, but red, um, green. And I'm going to use that card instead because I don't really need the heal. And then blue for the king shield. So as you guys can see, my king is 4 out of 6, which I got lucky in the bloody Liz pools. Um, that was such a waste, but that's okay. Um, and then the color cycle resets. And now I can ult and have a good shield. So yeah, 300k shield. So this is where a little bit of <laughs> math starts to come in. Because I pretty much want to... So this would have got rid of my ult gauge. I pretty much want to get him down to about here so I can finish off with an Escanor Goldfinger. So I'm probably kind of contemplating just yeeting Escanor cards at them. Let's see if this works. <laughs> this is going to give me corrosion, you'll see, but my whole thing is I just want to get them to about here. So I hope this doesn't do a lot. This might do too much. It does not. Okay, well, let's see if this does enough. It does not. So this will full heal. Okay, so again, just like last time, uh, we will be <laughs> back in two seconds because we're going to <laughs> restart that. So this will take a little bit of restarting just to get the right cycle going. Um, so let me just quickly log in. So I think what I'm probably going to have to do here is 
just go about it normally and then see where see where that gold finger lands us. So battles continue the battle. Jump back into the fight. And then we will see how we land here. Okay, so it's red. So if I do Right, so okay. So again, I want to kill through I want to get through this very fast, right? Because he's about to buff, which gives him evasion. Right, which is very annoying. So move to attack and debuff attack skills, and then the next turn after that, he'll put up a, a stance. Basically, once the stance is up, it's game over. You can't kill him. It takes two turns. You can't attack him at all um, because he'll he'll damage fifteen hundred percent of the attack. Right, which means you just he'll just basically insta kill you, um, and you can't remove his stance. It's got a, a damage cap of one. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of annoying, right? So you, you need to kill him kind of next turn at the latest. But if you're going to attack him and kill him next turn, you need to have a buff removal card because this is a buff. So this uh, that's this card here. So uh, I hope that makes sense. So ideally what I'm going to do here, I think I might just go a normal, a normal run through maybe. Because I'm not too fussed about Escanor's ult. So if I actually just go red... Let me use that card, because I've got another buff removal card, luckily. Green, blue. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to start again. All right. Let's just do that. Which is perfect, actually. Oh, no, it's going to put me onto a red. No, I wish I'd had another red, then would have put me onto the green. That would have been very nice. Okay. So, give me a red card. Oh, RNG is not on my side. Okay. So there you go, there's the buff. So I've got to get rid of the buff with a green buff removal card, which I'm going to do. Oh, one drive's not working. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um... So, again, evade, right? So I need to... So he's going to ult, and then he's going to start. So I, can't, I need to kill him now. So I'm going to buff... Remove his buff. I'm going to... Oh, and I do get a red... I did get a red card. Okay. That's good, actually. I, got, I lost my ult, so I got a red card. That's really helpful. Then I'm going to red card. And I'm going to... Oh, I think that's going to be enough to kill. I'm confident that... We can do enough. So, got rid of the buffs, which is what I needed. I want to drop it to about here. Perfect. And then I should be able to finish off with Eskinor Finger. Perfect. So, again, if that hadn't killed him in one shot, the death damage would have kicked in at the end. Right? So, um, that last phase is by far the worst and the most annoying of the deer and obviously super RNG heavy. Um, but we finished it with full health, uh, managed to get through it quite comfortably. Uh, got a little bit lucky with the buff removal cards because if that had stuffed us up, we would have been would have been done for, unfortunately. Uh, but that's why kind of two or three turning that last phase is super important. So make sure you save all the cards you need for it and get ready for it as well. Um, but that's it, guys. That is the deer. So a little bit shorter than the bird. Um, but I hope that helps. I hope that shows you guys kind of what teams you can run, how to do it, what the strategies are that I use. Let me know if you maybe have a better strategy. That's the one I found to be the most consistent. Um, like I said, I think the King Shield just comes in clutch. But I will see you guys when you've completed this list of Holy Relics because I'm sure you'll be more than capable of doing that now. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one.